a service of CNC Worldwide. The Daily is a service of CNC News and Jib Jab Greetings. I'm Bud Lowell, and your full AccuWeather forecast is right across the top of all CNC local news pages. The firefighters who survived a gunman's ambush on Christmas Eve in West Webster will speak publicly about the incident for the first time Wednesday afternoon. Firefighters Joe Hofstetter and Ted Scardino were both wounded when the gunman set a fire, then shot down the responding West Webster fire crew. Firefighters Michael Ciparini and Tomas Kachovka were killed. We'll have some of what they had to say on our next update. After a four-hour debate Tuesday, the New York State Assembly passed legislation to raise the state's minimum wage to $9 an hour. The measure also includes indexing that will tie minimum wage increases to inflation. Assembly Speaker Sheldon Silver and other members of the Democratic majority said final adoption of the minimum wage hike would directly benefit more than 925,000 New Yorkers who have seen their paychecks eaten away by inflation. This is a matter of human dignity. It is about the value of labor. For those men and women who care for our young children in daycare centers, who clean offices, who stock shelves, our current minimum wage $7.25 an hour falls short, far short, of meeting their basic need for food, shelter, heat, and transportation. But state Senate Republicans believe small businesses will be hurt by the increase. Silver rejects that argument. He says the majority of low-wage workers aren't hired by mom and pops, but by big national chain stores that are posting steady profits. Assembly approval aside, a minimum wage increase is far from a done deal. The Assembly's measure is more than Governor Andrew Cuomo is asking for. He wants eight seventy-five for the minimum wage. And as we said, Republicans are dubious. GOP Senator Tom Libis says some sort of increase will probably be approved sometime this year, but not unless it comes packaged with tax cuts for businesses that tend to hire minimum wage workers. The Rochester City School District is one of four that will be getting some extra state aid because they were able to cut millions of dollars in wasteful spending from their budgets. Rochester found more than $9.5 million in efficiency improvements, and theirs was the best performance of any district in the state. The four districts that won the efficiency competition will share more than $12 million in competitive education grants over the next three years. Together, all four squeezed more than $21 million out of their budgets. Governor Cuomo launched these efficiency rewards as a carrot to encourage districts to innovate cost savings while maintaining or improving student performance at the same time. The governor said New York can't keep spending more money per pupil than any other state and lag behind in student achievement. So the city school district will get $4.5 million over three years for innovating in several areas, including finding cheaper, better ways to provide staff development and to maintain school buildings. And Superintendent Bohem Vargas says at least some of this grant will pay for early reading instruction. Tuesday night's hearing about a proposed charter school in the town of Greece drew mostly positive comments. Discovery Charter School has bought the former Odyssey High School building on Hoover Drive, and they want to put one of their schools there. An info session in the new Odyssey Academy had most people pleased that the building will continue to be a school. The Hoover Drive building is one of three left surplus when the Greece Central School District consolidated last year. Charter schools run with public funds through a state charter, otherwise they function more like private schools. A memorial service was held Tuesday evening at the Rochester Institute of Technology's Interfaith Chapel for adjunct professor Edlin Chun, who was shot to death during a robbery at her home a month ago. The RIT flag was flown at half-staff Tuesday in memory of Chun, who taught in the School of Media Sciences and the College of Imaging Arts and Sciences. The dean's office of that college also announced they're establishing a teaching award in Ms. Chun's honor. The Edlin Chun Award for Outstanding Teacher will be given annually to a CIAS adjunct professor who exemplifies excellence and dedication in teaching. The inaugural award will be presented next school year. Chun's former neighbor, Jarrell Henry, and his girlfriend, Natalie Johnson, were arrested last week and charged with her murder. The Monroe County Sheriff's Office has identified the man hit and killed by a train in Churchville Sunday night as 26-year-old Austin Cotting. The Churchville man was hit by a CSX freight train at North Sanford Road and tossed clear of the tracks. 
deputies are still investigating how he came to be on the tracks in the first place. By the way, the sheriff's office now has a form on its webpage that encourages you to report distracted driving, like that one in front of you who doesn't go when the light turns green and when you pass them you see they're sitting there texting. Get the license plate number, print out the form, fill it out, mail it in. The owner of the car then gets a warning letter from the sheriff's office. Sheriff Patrick O'Flynn says he hopes this may prevent some possible tragedies. He calls it a friendly reminder. Rochester's Arson Task Force has charged a 20-year-old woman with setting a fire on New Year's Day 2012 at a Columbia Avenue home. Kimberly Smith was charged with second-degree arson for setting that house on fire. She was arrested this week in Gates after returning to Rochester from Georgia, where she'd gone to live. No one was hurt in that fire, but the house was so badly wrecked it had to be torn down. To the left of the player window, you'll find links to these and other news stories from CNC, and on the bottom of the page, links you can use to post news and information directly to us. What you share with us determines, uh, to some extent, what we're able to present to you, so let's hear from you. Next news is as it happens. Updates are when necessary, and I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.